Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll continue from our earlier basic functionality video of the AN AEQ33 Advanced Targeting Pod to discuss some of the more advanced and unique capabilities of the ATP, like extended range processing, Maverick handoff, multi track, the infrared pointer, laser spot track, and air to air mode. Let's get started. Okay, so first we are uh, northeast of Baghdad. And let's talk a little bit more about the extended range or XR functions of the ATP. Okay, so zooming into the uh, ATP display, you may recall from the previous video, we talked about two different ways to adjust the field of view of the TV and the infrared camera. Uh, first, there's the OSB. So by pressing the OSB3, we can go from TV wide, which again is using the infrared camera instead. TV picture in picture. TV narrow, and then TV narrow with XR processing. And then come back out with the infrared camera. We go from wide, wide XR processing, narrow, narrow XR processing, and then back out. Go back to the TV camera. And like we mentioned, we can also use the HOTAS, uh, namely the expand field of view button. But like we mentioned, when you do that, you're going to lose the XR processing uh, in the choices as you cycle through the different fields of view. So press once from TV to wide, TV picture in picture, TV narrow, back to wide. And again, with the infrared camera, we just go from wide to narrow and back to wide. So the new function we're going to talk about today is just using the HOTAS, say we're narrow now, we can actually implement the uh, XR processing using the HOTAS by double clicking, say twice within less than 0.5 seconds on the expand field of view button. So double click, we see a processing, and now we have a zoomed in higher quality image. And there's two big points to remember here. First is, in order to achieve the processing, you must be in a stabilized view, meaning point track, area track, or an INR track. If there's uh, no stabilization, no processing. Uh, the second is that as soon as you start slewing the ATP, you're going to lose that processing. As soon as you have release it, you see it flashing, it's processing, and now we have a new processed image uh, in XR. Go back to the TV camera. And I think we have a uh, SA10 site here, Baghdad International. Yeah, here we go. At around 44 miles out. So again, let's use the HOTAS to go to TV Narrow. We're going to double click on the Expand Field of View button, XR Processing. And now we've got a pretty nice image of the SA-10 site all the way out to 43 miles. If you want to disable the XR processing this way, just double click it again, the expand field of view button, and remove it. So as you can see, the XR processing is a super handy tool and really gives the uh, ATP uh, a leg up in terms of how far it can look out to with a nice clean image. Okay, we're now approaching Al Kut Air Base south of Baghdad, which is one of the new air bases coming to the Iraq map. And we're gonna use this opportunity to talk about Maverick handoff. And as I'm sure you're aware, there's two different types of handoff. There's automatic handoff for Maverick seekers with an, uh, infrared, like the uh, D and the G. And then there's manual handoff for Maverick seekers using a CCD camera. Uh, so first, let's take a look at the uh, a D, where we use automatic handoff. You can see that on the right display, we have the Maverick video called up. It's currently uh, not SOI. It's in pre-mode and also in a narrow field of view. On the left side, of course, we have our ATP. Uh, let's change our uh, field of view to white, hot, narrow, and look for an appropriate target. See this one right here. Let's uh, do some fancy uh, XR processing by double tapping the expand field of view button. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. Because I didn't have uh, a stabilized view, use either a point 
area or an INR, even though I selected XR processing, it didn't actually process the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, target management switch to the right to go to area. And now you can see the XR processing happening. And now I have a much cleaner image. I'm going to place the crosshairs over that shilka. You also notice in the bottom left corner, we have an S with a three below it. Uh, S simply means that the Maverick Seeker is slaved to the uh, ATP pointing direction and the three is the weapon station. So for an automatic handoff, we're going to first uh, do a point track on the target by pressing and releasing the target management switch forward. You can see we have a boundary box around the target. We have IR point. You also notice that SOI automatically switched to the Maverick video. And also in the bottom left corner, the S switched to a C, indicating that the handoff was complete. The big thing here is you can see that the Maverick Seeker then automatically, hence the name automatic, locked up that target. And at this point, we can go ahead and rifle on that. So that's the automatic. Let's take a look at manual now. I'm going to need to first change to a CCD Seeker Maverick, say an H. Back to weapon video. I change my SOI back to ATP. Again, I'm going to command uh, area track. So I've got some processing. I'm going to place the cursor over that target. Target management switch forward to initiate point track, SOI. Again, we can see a C for handoff complete. But the big difference here now is that the Maverick Seeker did not automatically then lock up to that handed off target. You're going to have to do that manually. You know, again, hence the name manual handoff. To do that, we're simply going to press the target management switch forward and release with the Maverick video as our SOI. And now we have the target locked up and we can rifle. But I think one of the most important things to remember here, too, is to do a proper handoff. You know, obviously, the Maverick uh, has to be within range to lock that target, which is generally around seven miles or so. So often when I see uh, someone having issues with handoff, it's because they are trying to hand off the target to a Maverick that's outside that Maverick range. So that's a little explanation of how to do the handoff with automatic and manual using the ATP. Next, let's take a look at multi-track or MT. And this is gonna allow us to track up to 10 ground targets or aerial targets. We'll first take a look at this in regards to ground targets and we'll come to the aerial targets near the end of this video. Uh, of note, you cannot use multi-track and laser spot track though at the same time. So to enable multi-track, we're gonna press OSB 18, selected by the reverse video. And let's add the first target to the multi-track list by placing it in the center of the cursor and then pressing target and management switch forward and release. So you see we have a circle around it. Now a target with a circle around it is called our selected target. A target in the center of the crosshairs is called our primary target. Let's do another. So what happened there is the next target became the selected target and the previous selected target became the secondary target. And I bet you're going to guess what happens with these next two. So as you might imagine, the next one became selected and the other two are now secondaries. And of course for the fourth target, same thing. So now that we have the, uh, the four added to our list, we can cycle through them by pressing target management switch to the right short by making each new one the selected and the other one secondaries. We can also remove targets from the list by placing it in the cursor and pressing target management switch aft.
the cursor is away from the selected, we can snap to it. So basically making it the primary by pressing the target management switch forward long. And you can see it snapped back there. We can also set the target as either a point target by pressing TMS forward or make an area target by pressing TMS right. Let's make this a point target. Now this is a point target that we could use for a weapons delivery. Finally, we can declutter the display by pressing target management switch long and hold. So holding and release. So those are the highlights of using multi-track for ground targets. Now in the previous video, we talked about the IR pointer, how to turn it off and on basic symbology, but I did promise you a look at it in a night mission. And that's what we'll do now. So looking at the uh, ATP, again, we can select it or deselect it with the OSB2, or the more easy way to do it is simply by pressing the target management switch to the right rapidly, twice within half a second. We can now see the symbology. Let's turn on our night vision goggles by pressing right shift and H. And to fire at the beam, all we have to do is press and hold the weapon trigger. And we can see the beam heading out there now. You'll also note on the ATP page, we have fl flashing PTR both at uh, the label at OSB2 as well as in the bottom right corner. And release the trigger to stop the firing of the iron pointer. So as we're flying to a H2 airfield and the three H3 airfields in Western Iraq, also coming soon, let's talk about some of the laser functions of the ATP. Uh, first, to use it, of course, we're gonna have to arm the laser with the switch here. Up on the ICP, we're gonna go to list, then miscellaneous, zero, and then five for laser. At the top, we have our TGP code that will be uh, transmitted on based on that PRF, which is 1688. But of course we can change it, say 1685, and then enter. To go to the LST or the laser spot track code, we'll dauber down. Right now it defaults to 1688, and we'll be coming back to this uh, in just a little bit. Dauber down again. We have the AG laser mode. It can either be combat or training, which we'll also see down here at the bottom. Right now it's a combat at 1685. But by pressing one of the buttons on the ICP, C5, we can change that to training at a lower power. Dopper down again, and we have our air-to-air -air laser mode, which is always going to be in training. And one more time, we have the laser start time delay, which is 8 seconds, but we can easily change that, say, to 12 seconds, and we're good to go. Let's now take a look at laser spot track, or LST. And as you might imagine, we'll have an offboard laser designation source, in this case a Reaper, that's going to designate a target for us on a defined laser frequency, which we just talked about before about how we set that. So again, we can go to List, M Select, 5 for laser. In this case, the second line LST code is 1688. So we just want to make sure that the code that the Reaper, in this case, is designating on is 1688, which it is. Back to return. At this point, once we hit laser on for the JTAC, we can either press OSB20 LST to start the laser spot search pattern, or we can hit the enable button on the throttle. So we'll have JTAC. One, the laser on. Laser on. Blazing. Now we'll hit OSB20, and it's going to search a three degree arc around our speed. Detected, L track. If you look up on the HUD, you can see a square with a dot in the center and lines emanating from the sides, and that's the destination location. We can make it a point track now or an area. Let's make it a point track by going forward on the target management switch. Now it's a point, and we can see it's also a point target up on the HUD and ready for a weapons delivery. So finally, let's take a look at the ATP in air to air mode. In this first example, we've got the FCR up on the left and the ATP on the right. I'm going to designate a target and bug it on the SCR. When we do that, it automatically slaves the ATP to that same target in the center of the crosshairs. 
you can see it there right in the center. We can make the targeting pod our soy and team is forward and release to make that a point target. And we can see that up on the HUD. At this point, if we were actually to set the SCR to override, so we're just using the ATP, we have a dash container indicating the sighting location where the ATP is tracking that target. In this final example, I've got the radar off and I'm just going to use the ATP in multi-track mode. So, I'm going to go ahead and press uh, multi-track at OSB 18. And we do that, it automatically populated the selected target and multiple secondary targets. I don't have to do that manually. And these will also be sorted uh, based on the priority, closer being the higher priority targets. You can also see that each detected target has its range as well, around 20 miles or so. Again, we have a single selected target and multiple secondaries, and we can cycle the selected target again by going right on the target management switch. And just like before, we can go target management switch long forward to make it the primary. Team is forward short to make it a point target. And then up on the HUD, we can see that dash container indicating the line of sight to it from the targeting pod. And what's really cool here is as long as the AIM-9 is in slave mode and the ATP is soy, it will automatically slay the AIM-9 seeker to that target being tracked by the ATP. So folks, very much hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks.